Today we are taking a look at the brand new DPVR E4. This is a new VR headset and this is a PC VR only VR set, so no standalone support, which is very interesting. So today we're taking a look at it, what's in the box, and what are my first impressions. I have been using this for about a month or a bit more than a month, so let's get into it and see what it is. So let's start off with what's in the box. Note that I already tried this out and took this out of the box, so it's not exactly how it's packaged. It's packaged very securely and it didn't have any damage on receiving it, so that's great. And I sadly cannot show the fancy peels because this thing had a lot of them. When taking it out, there were peels on top of the, I think the head strap, on top of the visor right here, which by the way, looks awesome. Looks very slick and there's also an RGB strip right here, which you can see once I power it on. So first of all, we got the headset and here's a breakout box. The head strap is pretty solid. It's an halo band and you can adjust the size right here. And the magic feature of the E4 is the flip up HMD. So it's on your head and you need to check something on your computer or your phone. You can simply flip it up, do what you want, flip it back and you're back into VR. This is just incredible to work with. So let's put the headset to the side real quick and look at what else is in the box. We got some controllers right here. And these feel fairly light. I did remove the batteries out of them because I was shipping them. But these feel pretty light, but they actually feel quite good. And they do feel pretty good in the hand. They're nice, well-rounded. And the button layout is exactly the same as the Quest 2. So that's also a thing for games. Any game that supports the Quest 2 on Steam VR should work with this headset as well. So that's the controllers. Let's get those out of the way and see what's in the black box right here. So again, it might not be packaged exactly like this. First of all, we got a little um, warranty card. That's all fine. We got a manual. That's also fine. Not that interesting. And then we got the cables. The batteries don't come included with the headset. So note, you do have to have two AAA batteries, two AA batteries, sorry, in order to power the uh, controllers. So in the box, the big thing you will see is two huge cables. First of all, we got the cables to connect it to the PC. Right here on one side, we have a DisplayPort cable. This is DisplayPort 1.4 and a USB 3.0 cable. And we got a second breakout box right here. And this is where the power goes. I really hope they would use two USB cables so it doesn't need a dedicated power plug. But the brightness of the headset actually goes very high. So that might need the separate power brick. This unrolls with a pretty nice clip. You can put this onto your shirt or whatever. And then the cable doesn't move around that much. And this breaks out to this connector. But this little fella, if I don't break my controllers, um, this little fella plugs into here, and this is the right way, and then you screw it in like this. Interesting fact, the second breakout box also has a headphone jack right here. And this is used for headphones because the audio isn't that great on the headset. But again, more about that later. So let's move this to the side real quick. And look at the last bit of cable right here. And this is the charging brick. So not the charging brick, the power brick, because, well, it's not battery based. It's very simple. You probably can replace this with another power brick with similar voltages. And that's what's inside of the box. So with the unboxing out of the way, let's talk about the hardware and the software of the E4. So let's start with the hardware, and this is the really strong selling point. The resolution is great, basically the same as the Quest 2, and the FOV is a bit higher. This higher FOV might be achieved by putting your eyes closer to the lens, and because this is a soft silicone cover, glasses aren't really something you can use with this. You can use lenses um, in your eyes, of course, or you can use custom lenses, which you can fit over here. I think they are working on a solution to that to provide themselves, but glasses probably won't fit under here. I tried with some glasses um, of people I know, and it just wouldn't work. So really keep that in mind. Also know the IPD 
is adjustable in software, but not hardware. These lenses are locked in the headset solidly. When I first started using it, I got some slight headaches, but after a while they went away. So I'm not sure if this was caused by the fixed IPD or if this was just something else, just not something I'm sure about. I personally would prefer seeing this with manual IPD adjustment using the lenses. Um, but right now it is just software-wise. So think about that whatever you want. The lenses are also Fresno lenses, so they're not using the new pancake lenses. I think that would be something which would be really cool to see with this if it had pancake lenses because it would be even smaller. But already it is pretty lightweight and it is really well balanced. So that's not really an issue in my opinion. I don't see a lot of glare, which is something Fresno lenses usually have. So the optics are actually pretty good and better than expected. Everything is really sharp, also because this is a wired PC VR connection with DisplayPort, so the video is uncompressed, just really solid. I think it's about, they say, 4K and it is 120 Hz, so that's great. The view in this is just amazing. And of course, we have the build. This is a fairly unique build because it has a flip-up HMD. So especially when wearing this, let me quickly put it on. You can just be playing a game or what I do a lot is game development. And once you want to change something, flip it up, change it, put it back again, and you're back to go. Or if you get a message, you get a message, flip it up, respond, and put it back again. And then you don't have to have the awkward, oh, can I look through this in the AR pass through? No, I cannot then partially remove the headset, put it back on. This is really helpful actually in day-to-day um, -day use with it. There's also a lot of uh, light cancellation and I barely have any light leakage, just a little bit through the sides of my nose. And if I adjust these, that's also pretty much eliminated. So light leakage is also pretty good on this headset. So now what's left? The software side. This is something which has been a bit lacking and it really shows that it was a bit of a beta launch. Especially at the start, it was really rough and it has made a lot of improvements. For example, there were some issues with rumble on the controllers, which felt really sluggish and sometimes just didn't work when playing fast-paced games like Beat Saber. But that has been fixed. It actually feels quite solid now. And the drivers for the rumble have been fixed. There have been some tracking issues and they are saying they will fix this around the end of July, begin August. So I'm really looking forward to that. If they properly fix the tracking issues and all, I think this is an absolute solid headset. Until then, it's a bit rough because, well, tracking is fairly important. And when in the darker room, I couldn't set up the tracking at all. So it just wouldn't function. I'm using this for over an hour. There apparently was a memory issue. And because of that, the tracking would just randomly flip to a random angle. So instead of the floor being flat, it would be like this. And that's very nauseating. I do not recommend it at all. But the support has been really active on Discord. You ask a question and probably within a day you get a response. So that's really great. They helped me solve a few issues and also just a few bug reports have been fixed already. So the firmware improvements are also quite fast. So that's great. And the last thing I want to mention is audio. The audio output on the speakers right here, they are at the bottom of the strap, aren't the best. I hope this is something they can still fix a little bit in the driver side, but it might just be the hardware. If it is, the audio isn't that great. When playing Beat Saber, for example, it was really immersion breaking to use the onboard audio and I had to use my own headphones. Using your own headphones is actually quite all right. Normally with the Quest, the cable kind of um, goes against your shirt or whatever, which could cause noise. But because the breaker box is at your back, you can put the cable over your shoulder and it's actually pretty good. I didn't notice that many audio issues with using the braided cable. So yeah, the audio with headphones is quite good and easy to use because of this breaker box. But sadly, the onboard audio isn't that great. The microphone, however, was pretty great. This is a quick test of the DPVR E4, a VR headset. And fun fact, I actually recorded a part of this video using the DPVR audio uh, microphone instead of my own mic setup. And it took me a few minutes to notice I was using the E4 and not my own setup, which kind of made me question my audio setup and made me question how good these um, actually are. So the microphone, this is pretty solid. 
when using the microphone while playing VR games, I did notice some clipping sometimes, like the audio was a bit loud and sometimes when breathing, there was a bit of wind caught and that might be fixed with some filtering, but either way, the audio is pretty solid on the headset. So would I recommend the DPVR E4 right now? Depends. It is a really great PC VR headset, but if you want to use any standalone features like on the Quest 2 or the Pico 4, I would probably go for those. I personally just like to pop on a headset, play a game for like half an hour and then remove it again. If that's the case, I do suggest a standalone headset because of those capabilities. If you just want to use PC VR games, this is a pretty solid headset. It does have some driver issues, so if you don't mind tinkering with them, this might already be great right now. And otherwise, I suggest waiting like one, two, three months um, and checking back in. Because if the driver issues are fixed, this is a really solid PC VR headset. Definitely better than something like the Quest 2. Pico 4 has a higher resolution, so that's a bit on the edge. But you really notice the video compression if you compare them side by side. So for PC VR only, this is a pretty solid buy. The price is all right. It might be a bit on the high side since it doesn't have any um, standalone features, but it is just a really solid device. I love the hardware. I love how it feels when using it. Um, so that's great. So there will be a more in-depth review in probably one and a half to two months. And this will go over all the in-depth details, like through the lens footage, how is it over longer periods of time? Do I still have those random headaches when using it sometimes? Which I'm still not sure what the cause is. Um, so definitely subscribe and check back in for the full review to see if this headset improves once it has all the drivers ready. So that was the quick introduction on the DPVR A4 with an unboxing and some first impressions. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I can see you in the full review. I'm out.